Hello once again, race fans. You're listening to the NASCAR Show here on the Grueling Truth, where legends speak. I'm Alex Gray, along here with Steve Brisley, and let's go ahead and get things started. We're going to have, we're going to talk about three races that took place this past weekend. We're going to touch up on the Gander Outdoor Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Monster Energy Cup Series. Uh, let's see, the Truck Series ran at Pocono. Ross Chastain wins again. Ross Chastain on a roll. He's definitely been one of the biggest stories in all three of NASCAR's big touring series this season. Uh, the Kentucky winner, Tyler Ankrum, was second. Harrison Burton and Christian Eckes were third and fourth. Brett Moffitt rounding out the top five. Uh, Ross Chastain, of course, he decided not too long ago, just a couple months ago, to uh, declare for the Truck Series title. And the way he keeps running, of course, he's still got to get into the top 20 in points, but the way he's running, that is looking pretty good on his end. Um, looking into the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Iowa. Chase Briscoe gets his second career Xfinity win, his first of the season. Um, he and Christopher Bell had a great battle for the finish there. Uh, third place was John Hernemacek. Noah Gregson was fourth, and Tyler Reddick rounding out the top five. And then finally, for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, the Gander RV400 at Pocono. This race was a relatively interesting race. as Denny Hamlin Gets his third win of the season. Of course, uh, Pocono is no stranger to him. He swept this track when he was a rookie in 06. Eric Jones was second once again. Um, three straight races or so now with top five finishes. So I have a feeling he's going to get a win here pretty soon. Martin Truex Jr. third. William Byron fourth. Once again, he's really been picking it up. And Kyle Larson rounding out the top five when you – excuse me. I was going to sneeze for a second. Uh, let's see. Kevin Harvick was sixth. Bless you. <coughs> there it is. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Uh, Daniel Hamrick was seventh, so good, really good run for uh, for the rookie. Uh, Brad Keselowski eighth. Kyle Busch ninth. Ryan Blaney rounding out the top ten. Other notable, notable finishes. Uh, Jimmy Johnson was 15th. Uh, he, I believe he won stage two uh, due to certain circumstances. Um uh, Eric Amaral at 12th, Chris Bush was 16th. Um, let's see here. Chase Elliott was 38th. He had a wreck. Ryan Priest had a wreck. He was 37th. Um, let's see. Kurt Bush 27th. Daniel Suarez in 24th. Bubba Wallace 22nd. Alex Bowman 20th. And some notable finishes there. All right. Well, let's start. Let's start with this. The, the, the race Pocono. I mean, is that a good track? I mean, to me. That seems to be a track a lot like Indianapolis, which really isn't designed to handle the weight and the power of NASCAR. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I understand the aero packages have gotten better. Uh, I thought it was a fairly mundane race for the most part. It was good racing, but yeah. it, it, to watch it, it's like, oh, gee, many Christmas. I think I was on lap like a, uh, 88, and I said, let me just get to the last 20 laps, because I had DVR'd it. You and I were talking and tweeting back and forth, and I, I had DVR'd it. I'm like, I'll just get me to the end of this thing. If there's a wreck, I'll watch it, but if not, get down to the last 20 laps and see what happens. Is this a, a – I mean, are these big two-and-a-half-mile tracks, other than like Daytona and Talladega, are they good for NASCAR? I mean, I really don't have – I don't really – feel like they're bad, you know. I know Pocono well, bad, has had I know Pocono has had races lately. I mean, we've been to good Kentucky, Kansas City, Chicago. I mean, you know, we've had some really, really, really good race. And the aero packages have been built for the mile-and-a-half tracks. Um, and, and you're always going to get close-quarter racing on the short tracks, like at, at Loudoun or New Hampshire. Or, or, and But these big two-and-a-half-mile no banking tracks like Indianapolis and like Pocono. They're built for Indy cars. They're built for ground effects. Cars mm-hmm. are stuck to the ground and don't need the banking because they're glued to the ground. Are they? Is it good for NASCAR to be running here now? You're, and now they're, I know you're going to make an announcement here in a little bit about the double header coming up next season, I think, and what's going on at Pocono. Are these good tracks for for this type of racing? Um, if I could put it into a context, I think 
that this error package, like I said in the past, I think I think it works on some tracks, but it doesn't work as well on others. And uh, it, this could be a case where this could be a track that they could uh, they could look at and go, okay, how can we adjust the error package to uh, perform better at this track and this track? Uh, yeah, let me. Yeah, so you mentioned the the double header. They actually did announce the scheduling and details. So they announced the race lengths. I know uh, Bob Pockers. Yeah, okay, Pockers posted it here on Twitter. So here's how what it's laid out. Thursday, ARCA practice, qualify, and race. So ARCA will run on on Thursday. Friday will be cut practice and qualifying for race one, and truck practice and qualifying. Saturday, the Xfinity practice, uh, the, cup, the truck race at 200 miles. The cup race will run at 350 miles. Sunday, Xfinity qualifying qualifying, Xfinity race, and then the other cup race, which will run at 350 miles. The lineup for Sunday will be inverted of the lead lap cars from Saturday's finish. The lap cars then start behind them, most likely by order of finish. Teams will use the same cars for both races impounded after qualifying Friday. Teams can work on them following the race Saturday, and then we'll go through tech again Sunday morning, and we'll have to meet uh, pre-race tolerances in tech Sunday morning. Likely we'll be allowed to change engines, but with still engine rule. Anticipate teams will use the same engine for both races and have the second race count toward 13 race minimum. Teams must use an engine for a second race. If there is damage, teams can use the backup car for Sunday, um, but they would have to start for the rear. Um, teams will use the same pit stall for both races. Uh, the track's going to increase camping spots in turn one. There will be one ARCA race next year at Pocono. There's still TBD on whether to have the IndyCar race next year or not. So that's four days and five races. That, that's going to be pretty exciting to watch. Well, yeah, it's a fun weekend. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the way you want to do it. If you're going to go, you're going to take your camper out there or your RV you, you kind of want to go there to see racing all the time, so I don't have a problem with any of that at all. I mean, do you? I don't have a problem at all. I think it's cool that people can come out and, and camp for a few days and tailgate and really enjoy themselves. Yeah. Agreed. Um, okay. Hamlin, Hamlin wins Pocono. Third win of the year. Um, JGR is looking real strong right now. We're starting to shape up now. We're down to what, like five or six races now for the playoffs? Our are, are, are cut off? Yeah, we're getting pretty close. We got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we got five races to go. All right. Who's in jeopardy here? Uh, I mean, Hamlin looked good. He looked strong. Yeah. Um, Hendrick look looks like they're struggling. Uh, I, they just look like they're struggling as a team. And now they've got two teams already automatically in. You got Bowman and Elliott already have wins, so they're in. Johnson's I, on the bubble. Uh, Byron is is hot, but I, I don't know where he's on in positioning right now. I didn't look at the standings in the last five minutes, so I don't yeah, know where me, he's at. Yeah, let me um, see here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I th- yeah, I think. It, I think I would use the term inconsistent. That's what I see in Hendrick. Some weeks they look really good. They look really fast. Some weeks they don't look as fast. Um, Obviously, William Byron was kind of the lead guy at Hendrick for Pocono. He's currently 12th in points, third best in points without a win. Uh, The best in points without a win is in ninth. That's Eric Amarola, Ryan Blaney in 10th. And then you've got uh, Byron 12th, Jones 13th, Larson 14th. Clint Boyer, 15th, Ryan Newman, 16th, and then Jimmy Johnson, 12 points from the cutoff line in 17th, and then you got behind him Suarez, Mars, Stenhouse, Busher. Um, All right, so let's talk about Hendrick real quick. Um, Kirchie change, right? Are, are, are they having organizational issues at Hendricks? I mean, because really none of their cars are performing exceptionally well now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I mean, like I said, is it just time to make some 
the administrative changes in that organization, or are they okay? It's really hard to say. They're really inconsistent right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, by the way, we, when we're talking about Jimmy Johnson. Um, Made a crew chief change. Yep. After especially that he's had the same crew chief for 16 years, mm-hmm. and now suddenly, um, you know, within the first year of a completely new crew chief, you know, 21 races in, um, they make a change. Uh, Kevin Meandering has been replaced with Cliff Daniels. Uh, Daniels will start calling the shots at Watkins Glen. Jimmy Johnson is basically saying, quote, we have to act now. We don't have any time to waste. So, uh, of course, Johnson, 83 career wins, seven titles, has not won since June 2017. It's been over two years. Um, so, obviously, you know, this it, it, it does kind of remind me when Junior, uh, Dale Junior went to Hendrick, you know, in 08, and he brought – Tony Erie Jr., his longtime crew chief over, had a decent season, made the chase, won a race. Um, suddenly after that, you know, 9 10 he fell off. He was not as competitive as one would think. So, you know, they made some crew chief changes. Lance McGrew was there for a while. Then they brought in Steve Letart, and Jr. became, you know, a title contender from 2011 to um, 2014, 2015. So that's what it kind of makes you think of here. I don't know if necessarily that's going to be the case. If uh, anything, Cliff Daniels, he was the race engineer on Johnson's team when they won the 2016 championships, uh, worked in the competitive competition systems group following the 2018 season, and rejoined the 48 team as a race engineer last month at Sonoma. Uh, a sign that potential changes were being considered. Uh, Kevin Meandering will remain with Hendrick Motorsports in a senior competition role, uh, he got just 21 races with Johnson, while Chad Knauss had 604. Yeah, so, isn't that great? Isn't that great in NASCAR when you get fired, you get promoted? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean <laughs> that's kind of like that's kind of like uh, Zipidelli, uh for Stewart, when he was he was Tony Stewart's crew chief for a long time, wasn't he? Yeah, great Zipidelli. And then he got he got kind of set down as the crew chief, and he gets promoted to director of, of racing or whatever his title is now at SHR. So it's kind of interesting how I, I, I've got to have a job like that, where when I get fired, I get promoted. <laughs> you need a job like that, too. Yeah, or sometimes they just move people around. Like, I remember yeah, one. No, I, I, I know. I'm being facetious. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, yeah. So is it, – it, is Hendrick poised to make any damage in this year in in, in the playoffs? I mean, are, do they have anybody that can compete? I mean, they Chase don't have Elliott. that together right now. Yeah. So, looking at all four drivers here, Byron has way much improved from his rookie season, and I still have a feeling he's going to win this season. If not, he's going to come really close. Um he, he has won in everything on his way up, and I think Byron has superstar potential. He's that good. So he's seen up with Knauss, and um, I, I still think Byron can sneak out a win. Like, at Kentucky, uh, actually, I was looking through my footage of, uh, of what I took at the Kentucky race. Uh, Byron had the lead up until he had that restart violation. But looking at Byron, first off, I think he gets in. I think he'll be fine. And I think he can make some noise. Now, Chase Elliott, he kind of – he caught a little bit of fire in the playoffs last year. He won – of the three races he won, two of them came in the playoffs. So, once again, there's a possibility Chase could catch fire. But he's had a couple of bad finishes. He's got to figure something out here. Um, and I know that's not necessarily been him. I believe he had some or sort of a motor issue in New Hampshire – and uh, he had tire issues at Pocono. Bowman, he's really caught on fire. He started producing better finishes. He got the win at Chicago land, which was much needed on his end. I still think Bowman could potentially make noise as well. My biggest concern, Hendrick, is Mr. Seven-Time Champ Jimmy Johnson. Uh, once again, he has not been as competitive as he used to be. Last year was his first season ever without a win. Uh, of course, he came really close with the Roval. He did win a couple stages this year, um, it, and you know it, it's it's hard to to watch someone like Johnson, who's 
you know, arguably one of the best in the business right now, a seven-time champion. Um, you know, I still have a, I still have this hinge that he's going to get in, but he's going to, he's going to barely get in. That's what I'm thinking here. Um, you know, they're making this crew chief change now because Rick Hendrick is sitting there going, okay, Johnson's in a little bit of trouble here. Now he's 17th in points. He's outside the playoffs. Rick Hendrick went, okay, time to make changes. We got to, we got to do something different here to see if, you know, the 48 can start producing better results and perhaps get back into victory lane, which for Johnson would be much, much needed. Um, so, yeah, that, that is how I assess Hendrick right now um, from all four drivers. So, you know, they've really they, – they've looked okay. They've been a little inconsistent, but, you know, Chase got the win at Talladega. Bowman got the win at uh, Chicago Land, and I – you know, I I still see a William Byron win coming very soon. So that's right. all I can say about the Hendrick camp. All right. Um, before we move on to other things, Kyle Larson. I know you're high on Kyle Larson. Um, what has he done for me lately? Well, yeah, Larson has kind of had an up and down season. He's currently 14th in points. He's a about let me see here. He's about thirty-five points, I think, to the good. Um, uh, of course, yeah, he's, he's, biggest... he's. I think he's tenth in the playoffs. I think he's tenth in the playoff standings. So he's going to get in. Yeah, I think Larson gets in. I think he'll be okay, but he has. He doesn't seem to be as competitive as he's been in the past, though. Yeah, because twenty seventeen, he broke out. He won like four races, and I'm sitting there going, okay. Larson's going to be interesting to watch in 2018. Didn't mm-hmm. he? He almost won one race in Chicago Land, but you know he didn't get in victory lane this year. Well, okay, he won the All Star race, but that's not a points race. You know, that's just for the a million dollars. So I thought maybe that All Star win was going to you know push him in the right direction, and it it kind of has, but it hasn't been like oh Larson's now won a couple races. It hasn't been like that. There's still an outside chance, of course, he could potentially win a race. He got the fifth place at Pocono, which is going to be a much big help for him in the points. Um, but, yeah, man, I, it's really hard to say why Larson isn't, you know, com- as uh, as competitive for wins as he was a couple seasons ago. Okay. Um, SHR, Stuart Haas Racing. Um, they seem to be lighting some fire again. Um, are they coming around all of a sudden, do you think? Are they getting in, in, in a playoff shape? Yeah, I think so. You know, I personally believe, I said it before, you know, once somebody gets a win, I think they're going to start picking it up. And uh, obviously, Kevin Harvick got, 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 got one win, win out of four drivers. They got one win out of four drivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me look. Let's take a look at the points again here real quick, if I can find it. Yeah, I'm looking at them. Suarez is um, – He's in 18th in, in, the, in the playoff points. Um, yeah, I mean, Clint Boyer is uh, 15th in the playoff points. He's on the bubble. Amarola looks Where's, good, though. Amarola right. is 11th in the playoff points. And then, of course, you now you got a win out of, out of Harvick, so he's locked, so it's no big deal with him. But is this a team that's underachieving this year? It kind of does feel that way because last year, you know, they were the team to beat. I mean, they were winning left and right. Harvick won a lot of races last year. I mean, he was – I thought he was for sure going to win the championship at one point, but obviously he came came up just short. Um, They had Kurt Busch. Um, Perhaps maybe losing him kind of hurt. Since he was, since he is, you know, a seasoned veteran, um, Suarez, I still think he's a pretty good driver. I still think he got thrown into a Cup car a little too soon because of Carl Edwards' retirement. Um, and then who am I missing? Amarola and Boyer. Boyer, you know, he hasn't really quite lived up to the expectations that people thought he would. Um, you know, obviously he was. Uh, Drive had Michael Waltrip, then he had the one year for uh, H. Scott, then he came over to SHR. 
He's only had two wins with them. Both of them came last year. Um, and once again, now he's on the bubble. You know, well, I mean, he's, he's kind of driving. I, 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 you know, I think the four car is a signature car, but he's driving the 14 car, which is A.J. Foyt's number, who is Tony Stewart's hero. So he's yeah. kind of in a signature car, too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that, that was Foyt's number when he ran most of his time in Indy car racing. And we all know that Tony Stewart is a, a huge fan of um, AJ. So, I mean, are we done with the Pocono? Is there anything else we need to talk about Pocono? I, mean, I thought I thought it was an average race. It went fine. Great win for Hamlin and FedEx. Good job for those guys. It was competitive. Um, but anything else? You know that that's a that's a tough track that wears on your brakes left and right like there's no tomorrow because of the tri oval situation there and the three different turns they're all set up and banked differently. Anything else we need to cover about that you thought odd about Pocono? Uh, can't really think of anything else involving Pocono. I yeah. think we are we're good to go there. Um, yeah. But we okay. talked about we talked about Tony Stewart and obviously this. This broke out yesterday. Um, Tony Stewart punching a heckler at a racetrack <laughs> in Minnesota. Um, Good for him. Once again, uh, you know, obviously there's a video on the Internet. You can go look at it, and you can make the assumption yourself. Uh, someone kind of just, I guess, bad-mouthing him, and uh, Stewart flips him off. And then Stewart just said, okay, come here, you piece of whatever, and popped mm-hmm. him right in the face. Um, yeah, did you watch, um, did you watch the Reds Pirates game last night? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. I was at work, and uh, that's actually when I heard about Yasiel Puig being traded to Cleveland. But uh, <laughs> well, the fight the fight was great, <laughs> and another one. Oh my God! Another. Huge fight. <laughs> of course, they it's had, just an uh, Amir, uh, uh, Amir 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 Garnett went after the entire Pirates team by himself. <laughs> he went after him by himself, and then finally the, other, the rest of the Reds came over. you got to watch the video. It's, good. it's fun. Yeah, I'm so. pulling it up now. This ought to be interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you'll enjoy it. Um, okay. Uh, silly season, before we get into Xfinity and Trucks in more detail. All right. You, you got some guys here. You know, you got Ross Chastain, you got Cole Custer, and, you know, you got Blake Surfer. You got some drivers in here that are making a name for themselves right now. You got two females coming up. Do you have any idea yet, with six races to go in the regular season, who's kind of in jeopardy right now? Um, If I was them, I'd be saying, you know, I need to get a win or I need to get in and be competitive. Do you have any idea of that yet? Because we're getting close now. Yeah, we are getting close. And, um, you know, we're probably expecting to hear uh, a lot more news coming soon. Um, we talked about Ross Chastain and where he could end up. Um, he could perhaps, you know, run uh, an Xfinity or truck next year. He is kind of on a contract with Chip Ganassi's team. Because obviously the original plan was he was going to run for Ganassi's extending team for a championship, and I will argue for the case that DC Solar wasn't, you know, we know what happened there. Uh, he'd yeah. probably be in the points right now. But looking at casting, a lot of people point, you know, if Kurt Busch were to retire after this year, casting could go to the one. Um, the problem is Kurt Busch. Is also He's running really win. well. Yeah. Um, so the question remains, it's a one-year deal. So does Kirk Bush come back for 2020? And if so, does Chastain, you know, does he run for somebody? Does he try to run for a truck Xfinity title in the time being? Because I'm going to say this right now. Um, I still, I know he still has to hop into the top 20, but I think Chastain's going to do that with these. And I think Ross Chastain is good. As long as he's in the playoffs, I think he's going to win the Truck Series title. Change my mind. Ross Chastain is going to win the Truck title. That's 
firmly what I believe, and I think it's meant to be. You know, I think it's one of those, it's destiny that he wins the truck title. Now, it could be wrong, obviously. You know, if you want to, you know, come back to me in November and go, you know, he loses, and you want to call me full of crap, then go for it. Um, Clint Boyer. All right, so what holes, what holes are there in Cup right now? make room for these guys because i mean they're, they're good drivers i mean they're, they're winning they're winning wherever they're racing and yeah. what holes i mean we we talked a little bit about boyer i think boyer's potentially a hole you yeah know, and he's a uh, great guy but i i, I can see boyer maybe and we talked about this last week better suited in the booth at this point in his career you know he's he's a witty guy he's got great insight into the sport He's got good character. Um, but where are the holes in NASCAR right now where these these three young drivers, and you got Deegan and Decker, and, you know, they're going to want to put a female back into these cars as soon as they can get one capable of driving one. Um, so and there's other drivers too. I mean, I'm, you know, we're just talking about, you know, there's um, – Cedric, Austin Cedric is running great. He's he's having a good year. There's other guys. Where are the holes right now in your mind in NASCAR? Well, for as you mentioned the 14, the 14 and the 41, Suarez and Boyer, they're in contract years. Um, you look at the, the drivers I see in the Xfinity Series. Reddick's probably going to go to a third RCR car. Uh, he has driven the 31 for a few times this year in the cup. He's done pretty good in it. Um, he's proven that last year's championship run was not a fluke. I will say that as much right now. Um, excuse me. Uh, let's see here. Give my train of thought. Okay. Uh, Chase Briscoe, I'll bring him up. You know, he's probably due to move up to the cup in a couple years. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to mark him down as the replacement of Kevin Harvick. That's what's looking like. Um, Obviously, if um, some sponsorship can be found there, he doesn't have a big Ford logo on the hood, that'd be a little bit more helpful. Uh, but Briscoe, uh, Ford really is banking on him, and I think he's a very talented driver. Uh, I brought him up because he wanted Iowa, so I think it's only fair that I bring him up. Now, Cole Custer, um, I still believe he could replace Boyer. I've heard some rumors about Kyle Larson going to SHR potentially and seeing some shakeups there. I really don't know. Um, it really depends. Obviously, uh, people suggest that because of the dirt racing background that both of them have, and there could be some sort of chemistry there. Uh, and then, okay, let's say if that were to happen, then maybe Chastain could end up in 42, um, if that was the case. I, I, I still think, in the end, Larson's probably going to stay at Ganassi. But again, I mean, anything can happen. I've heard, you know, I remember last year, you know, Chris Knight, there's going to be earth-shattering news, and it was Furniture Row closing up shop, and, and Truex going to the 19th. So, um, let's see, what other holes are there? I didn't bring up, well, Christopher Bell's a massive question mark. Where the heck is Toyota going to put him? Um, you know, are you what, are you, what are you going to do there? The second LFR card, do you kick the Benedetto? You know, Eric Jones is starting to really perform better. He's probably going to get resigned. I'm currently working on a contract extension. He and Eric Jones is racing for that contract extension now. He is, he's on fire. I mean, he's a good top five after top five. So, dear Toyota, what are you going to do? Especially that you have JGR and LFR and Gaunt Brothers who runs part time. You know, what do you do? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe they can walk up to Gaunt Brothers and be like, hey, if we gave you a little bit more money, would you run full-time and put Christopher Bell in the 96? I don't know if they're willing to go in that direction, but it's certainly a possibility. Uh, I don't think many have probably discussed, but, you know, TRD doesn't have the cup teams like Chevy and Ford do. Well, um, that's, yeah, that was my question for you. How, how many teams does Toyota have in cup? Six? JGR, LFR, and Gaunt Brothers. Um, they used to have, yeah, I mean, I remember they used to have Michael Waltrip's team, Red Bull, BK Racing, uh, quite a few Toyota teams, and uh, they've all gone by the yeah, wayside. There's no real opportunity there. I mean, 
you know, there's no real opportunity there for anybody to really – and most of the guys are driving those cars. It's mostly JGR. And, you know, they're, they're top drivers. You're not going to replace those guys. You know, you're not yeah. going to move them out of the spot. So there's really not a lot of holes for Toyota unless they want to get more involved, just put more money into the sport. And I'm looking right now. Uh, yeah, it's you know, I mean, it's, it's definitely Ford and Toyota that are that are dominating, but it's just because of the drivers, I think, more than anything. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Exactly. Okay. Now yeah. I'm, seeing that, I'm seeing that Revit's fight now. That pitcher, number fifty, he was not too thrilled. There's Yasiel Puig in the mix now. He's in an Indian uniform. Once again, of course, it's Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, uh, it's, like I said, like NASCAR drivers, like, like two guys, 150-pound guys getting out of their car with their helmets on and start bitch-slapping each other <laughs> after they bump fenders after a race. That's you know, hilarious. When I was a kid, the very first NASCAR race I remember watching was the 2004 Chicago Land Cup race, and I remember vaguely – uh, Tony Stewart and Casey Kane's pit crews got into a big fight mm-hmm. um, after the wreck had happened. I remember that. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, and, and yeah, we did. A, I did a show earlier today with my good pastor about the baseball incident. And <laughs> is oh, yeah. that stuff good for sport or not? I mean, I don't know. It's kind of fun to watch, but <laughs> it's probably not the way they want to represent themselves. Um, okay, the trucks, so we're done with Pocono. We're fine. Yep. Um, the 11 car does good, gets a win, third win. He solidifies his points. Jimmy Johnson gets a stage win, gets some points, um, but still is really on the borderline. That's where he's going to make it. Hendrick, in general, seems to be struggling right now. Uh, yeah. Stuart Haas seems to be getting warmer. Uh, you know, they, they seem to be, I wouldn't say they're hot, they're just getting warmer. But, it's you know, we've we got six races to go, five, six races to go, whatever it is. Um, the trucks are going to Eldora, I think, this weekend, correct? Yes, the trucks run at Eldora on Thursday. And here's the $10 question. Should NASCAR have one race on dirt? I mean, yeah. Uh, I think, heck, I'd love to see Cup and Xfinity run at Elador or any other dirt track. It's something different to, you know, throw into the mix, and it gives drivers a challenge, and it gives drivers like Kyle Larson and other guys who, and Christopher Bell who have a – a dirt racing background that can go to uh, their advantage. Um, that'd be a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, I think that could make a good all-star race. You know, obviously you know, I know. A great point. It, that's a great point. That, that, that may be the most intelligent thing I've ever heard you say. They should run the all-star race on a dirt track. And let Charlotte the guys go back. Track. Do, do they have a dirt track a, at Charlotte? Yeah. I know they have a yeah, drag they have a strip right, strip right next to it. I've been yep. there um, a couple times, and uh, um, I didn't know they had a dirt track. Is it in, in the infield? Uh, no, it's uh, it's outside the track. Outside of it, it, yeah. I know they've got a drag strip right there too. So, but that would be a good idea. Just run the All Star race on a dirt track and let the guys just go have at it. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun. You know, pay homage to. Uh, the grassroots of racing. Let me pull it up here. Okay, here's the maps of the track. Um, yep, there it is, right uh, across the street from turn four. There's the Charlotte okay. track, and then, yeah, there's the, the drag strip as well. So, yeah, I think that would be uh, something different, something cool to do, you know, uh, you know, running or, you know, maybe like run the truck series there too. That'd be kind of fun. Um, good seating too, from what I can tell. So, yeah, I think this would be a, a, something different, something cool. I think the fans would really love it. Yeah. it we're throwing ideas out there, NASCAR. We, we, we don't make decisions. We're just saying, 
it might be it's always fun to change things and not you know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results and you know but we're getting down to that critical point in time now um in, in terms of tony stewart and his incident are is nascar giving fans too much access to the drivers teams and crew chiefs and just too much access in general do they need to kind of cut that back a little bit um, or is that just all on tony you watched the video i watched it this morning it's an off the cuff comment. I mean, you know, I'm sure you haven't given a lot of thought. So, I mean, what's NASCAR to me is very fan driven. Um, when I was at Kentucky, seeing the drivers, you know, walking to the the media room for the drivers meeting for the race, it was cool just seeing all the the fans that are there, hoping that you know they can get a picture or an autograph, and obviously, you know. There, you know, there's going to be different opinions. Like, oh, well, the guy pretty much said this, and, well, I think Tony was being ridiculous. Tony's Tony, okay? He's always been, he's always had kind of that short fuse. Um, you know, I I would hate it if, you know, next, if they looked at it and went, okay, we should probably, like, give them less access because that may not make the fans happy, you know? I think NASCAR is very fan-driven, and especially in a time right now where NASCAR needs to, A, bring in fans, uh, and B, potentially bring back the old fans. I've actually, you know, getting off of a side note here, I've actually heard some reports that some got, some people have actually gotten back into NASCAR thanks to Dale Jr.'s podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. Um, some yeah. People like I, 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 yeah, yeah, I listen yeah. to it, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a good thing. But yeah, I mean, I think it's okay. Um, I think it's, just because I think NASCAR is much more fan driven than other sports, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I, I and think I'll, I'll just say I'll just say this because I'm a dirty old man. I'm, I'm missing Shannon Spake. She hasn't <laughs> been on for she she's, she she ran the, the the triathlon. She hasn't been on a week, so they got Jamie Little on there. Uh, <laughs> they got I'm like okay, where's Shannon Spake? I, I you know they, they got Adam Alexander who follows us. You know, they've got Larry McReynolds, and they've got some driver on every week, one or the other. Um, but I'm missing Shannon Spake. <laughs> That's a stupid thing to say, but I'm missing her. <laughs> so come back, Shannon, <laughs> as quick as you can. <laughs> She's good at what she does. She's good at what she does. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, what else we got to talk about? Um, oh, oh, okay, so Watkins Glen. Let's go. Let's, let's just now preview Watkins Glen. All right. So last year, uh, Chase Elliott got his very first career Cup win a year ago at Watkins Glen. Uh, that good battle between him and Martin Truex Jr. Uh, so perhaps he could probably be a favorite for this upcoming race at Watkins Glen. Uh, the road course. Uh, I can't really, I can't really think of any pro course runners at the moment, but Watkins Glen has produced some rather good finishes. Um, if you remember Marcus Ambrose and Juan Pablo Montoya one time, mm-hmm. and uh, Ambrose and Keselowski the next year, with Kyle Busch, that was 2012. Um, yeah, Watkins Glen's always been a fun track, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what occurs here. Um, in terms of a pick to win. Well, I guess we'll get to that here in a minute, unless you had something. Yeah, my yeah, my question was, is, I mean, are these cars really set up for road course racing? I mean, you know, they, they weigh, what, three to 4,000 pounds? They're heavy cars. Yeah, the cars um, are... Uh... And these guys aren't used to turning right, unless they're going to hit something. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind. I'm cool with having road courses okay. again. Long car because I think it once again provides a different challenge for all the different racers. You know, so you're always going. You know, because we're always getting that that stereotypical and to quote one of my favorite comedians, Jeff Dunham. You know, with uh, his his uh, puppets, they're making a left turn. You know, we always get that. I always get that when 
I'm telling people I like NASCAR. It's just like there's that's left not and right. Is. That's not Ahmed, is it? That was uh, Sweet Daddy D. Who made Sweet that Daddy D. Okay. Who's Sweet the old guy they have on? He has on the old. Uh, El- I would say Elmer. I don't think it's Elmer. Uh, you mean Walter? Walter. Walter. Yeah. Walter. Yeah. yeah. I, I hear that coming out of Walter. Yeah. I love. I love Jeff Benham too. He's great. I've actually seen him in concert. Yeah, I've seen him live a couple times too. But yeah, um, yeah. that's always a joke I make. But with road courses, it just gives a different challenge. It shakes the schedule up. You know, you're making lefts and you're making rights, and uh, I think that yeah. really throws. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. So, all right. Um, who are you predicting? All right. Um, Do I have to go you know first what? again? I always, I always have to go first because you're smarter than me, so I'll go first. Gee, many All right. Let me write my down right now. All right. Um, I'm going with I'm going with Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick as my dark horse. I think Hendrick is too far out of it for me to pick even. Chase Elliott is a dark horse anymore. Okay. Um, my pick to win. So I'm going to go with Kyle Busch. Actually, judging by how he's been racing the past few weeks, Eric Jones, third place, third place, second, his win's coming. And um, I know it's a road course, so that's a bit of a risk. But honestly, man, watch out for that 20 car. Eric Jones has been really consistent lately. I think a win for him is coming very soon. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I, I think Eric Jones can, you know, at least I think he's going to crack out a win before the playoffs start, um, just by the way he's been racing lately, um, just, you know, based on a track record. So my, my pick's a little different. Well, perhaps I could list him as a dark horse, but the way he's been racing lately, I'm going to list Eric Jones as my pick. As a dark horse, he's been good on road courses lately. I'm going to throw him Truex just because, you know, he's been pretty decent. He almost won that race last year, uh, but he, of course, ran out of gas, and that was all Chase Elliott. So that's what I got. I got a couple Gibbs guys, Jones and Truex. Okay. Very good. Yeah. All right. Anything else left to cover? I don't know. Like I said, Pocono was just kind of a mundane race, so there's really not a lot to – I mean, there were no penalties. Nobody got in trouble. We got Eldora going on. Um, with the dirt tracks with, with these guys. And you know, Tony puts on a great show there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been to the track. I've not seen a, a NASCAR race at that track, but I've been to that track. Um, so it's going to be fun. It's a great week, and we're going to grind it out now. We've got five races left, and it gets serious now for these guys, you know, in 14 through 17 that need to get something done or try and get a win. Um, Hendrick doesn't look good right now, but that doesn't mean it can't change next week. Uh, yeah. The way the, the, the sport works, I mean, you know, you dial a car in and you bring it and you don't wreck it. And, you know, and they've got two cars already locked into the chase. So two of the 16 spots are already there. Uh, Haas has one car in locked, isn't it? I mean, he's only, I mean, Harvick's the only one locked in. He's the only winning car for them, isn't, isn't he? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then you got JGR who looks unbeatable. Uh, RCR, what's the story with RCR? Are they doing anything? I mean, yeah, RCR has a well, they haven't had a win. Uh, Hemrick's kind of had an up and down season. Austin Dillon hasn't made a whole lot of noise. Uh, RCR, and yeah, RCR hasn't really been on the ball. Um, of course, in the past couple of years, they've had wins. On different occasions, Austin Dillon winning a couple of races, Ryan Newman even getting a win in 2017. So, I mean, yeah, RCR hasn't really been as competitive as other teams. I uh, like Di Benet- Matt Di Benedetto. 
I like him. I think he's a guy that can race his way in. I think if he gets in, he's going to race his way into this thing. Yeah. You know, I, I think he's a good race car driver. I think he's good at what he does. Um, and then we know that uh, the one car, Bush is in. Larson is in, uh, what, 14th now we said? 10th or 11th or 13th or right around in there. He, he's, you know, probably going to make yeah. it. But they haven't been really competitive. They can't seem to finish races. But anyway. All right, now we go to a whole new venue. We go, we, go, we go to road course racing, and we see it's a whole different world. And, yep. you know, you you get uh, – this is not a race where – the guy you think is going to win an oval race is going to necessarily step up and win. Um, yeah. This is a lot of bumping and grinding, a lot of rubbing and, and racing, and we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. Definitely. That's all I got. All righty. I'll go ahead and close things out. And last thing, it looks like Watkins Glen is also closing in on yet another grandstand sellout. That track's been selling out for the past several years now. All right. So uh, from all from both of us here, uh, Alex Gray and Steve Brisley, this has been the NASCAR show here on The Grueling Truth, where legends speak. We'll see you next time to talk about Watkins Glen and other news that pops up around the racing world. Thank you. We'll see you next time.